This is Janice News, and we are coming to you from the mass media complex in Lusaka. Here are the stories that are making headlines in our news. President Hakainde Hichilema has pledged to drill boreholes at Nipa and Evelyn Horn College fulfilled. Government happy with works on the 1.5 million United States dollars Tanzania Zambia Mafuta pipeline. 2023 Africa Think Tank Summit opens in Lusaka. And maintenance works on the Levi Mwanawasa Stadium impresses government. One Zambia, one nation. With the news in detail, my name is Emos Zulu. President Hakainde Hichilema has fulfilled his pledge to drill boreholes for the National Institute of Public Administration, NIPA, and Evelyn Horn College, respectively. The boreholes have been drilled using family resources. A check by Zanis found works at NIPA being finalized while works at Evelyn Horn College have been successfully completed. Management at both, the, at both learning institutions in as well as students, have expressed gratitude with the development, saying it will avert water challenges being experienced. On the 31st of August 2023, President Akainde Hichlema pledged to drill a boho each at both the National Institute of Public Administration, NIPA, and Evelyn Horn College, respectively, when he visited the two learning institutions. The boho's were to be drilled using the first family's private resources, leaving to his pledge the first family has delivered the promised boreholes at both institutions. Managements at the two institutions are elated with this development. We are happy that the president has um, fulfilled his promise and has sunk uh, this borehole, which will address those sanitation problems. This borehole will be linked to the hostels around here and uh, will result in a situation where we will have throughout the day very good pressure in terms of water in our, in our student hostels. So we are very grateful to the president. He has, of course, as expected, fulfilled this uh, promise he made to the students. The students, too, are more than overjoyed with the first family's gesture saying it will improve sanitation at the two institutions. Listen to, we've, we've been having a water shortage in, in campus, so the boho is going to help us uh, in, in, in a water crisis that we've been as an institution. We are grateful as an institution because this boho has come at the right time. We've suffered enough for concerning uh, uh, the water. We had water crisis for a, uh, quite a long time. With the coming of this ball from the president himself, we are so much grateful and would love to extend the um, gratitude to the president because this boho will help us to at least reduce on the water crisis that the institution has faced over a period of time. The gesture by the president is what is winning him support within the student populace across the country. Nipa and Evelyn Horn College have a combined student population of over 15,000. Kalan Muchima reporting for Zanis in Osaka. Meanwhile, Vice President Mutalina Lumango says Zambia has made strides in implementing the six pillars of the Addis Ababa Declaration on Population and Development, AADPD, in various sectors of the economy. Ms. Nalumango says government extended free education policy to secondary education and enacted the Child Court Bill in 2022 to fulfill the first pillar of AADPA, which is dignity and equality. She was speaking during the official opening of the African Population Experts Committee and ministers in charge of population meeting. We have more in the following report. Vice President Mtale Nalumangu has today officially opened the African Population Experts Committee and ministers in charge of population meeting in Nosaka at Mulongoshi International Conference Center. The meeting has attracted participants from 55 Africa Union member states who are here to review the Addis Ababa Declaration on Population Development, which was adopted 10 years ago by African heads of state. During the event, Mrs. Nalumango highlighted the scores that Zambia has made in implementing the declaration 
and the International Conference on Population and Development Program Agenda. In the pursuit of human dignity and equality, Zambia has taken steps to protect the rights of vulnerable groups. In 2022, we enacted the Children's Court Act to safeguard children's rights. Additionally, in 2022, we extended free education to pre-primary, primary, and secondary school levels, a move that is already benefiting more than 3 million children who would have otherwise been out of school. Pillar two, health. Zambia has also made a lot of progress on health. For example, we have reduced the maternal, 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 sorry, we have reduced the maternal mortality rate by 34% from 278 in 2018 to 183 per 1,000 births in 2020. African Union Commission in Health, Humanitarian and Social Development pledged the African Union's continued support in the implementation of the ICPD program agenda. Stress the importance of cooperation, especially collaboration with our member states through the submission of national reports. This gives me the opportunity to thank the member states for submitting their national reports in reviewing the De uh, uh, Disababa Declaration. I seize this opportunity to call upon member states which have not already done so to submit their reports. And I recall that these reports are necessary and indispensable so that we can have a complete analysis of the continental program. Minister of Health from Democratic Republic of Congo stressed the importance of confronting global challenges such as climate change for a better future. Of the Addis Ababa Declaration is anchored in capitalizing the national resources of the continent in and looks at the deficits in skills, access to education, and the possibility of mitigating the challenging issue of migration. The exchanges and trade between our people have created a conducive environment for fighting against negative social norms which deprive some parts of our population of their rights, especially women and girls. And some cooperating partners shared their sentiments. We need to play a strategic influencing and agenda shaping role on the global stage that will also translate to local solution for our people that are future fit. Second, the scale of durable and just transformation needed requires commensurate sustainable financing at the right pace. We need to ensure we have a prime finance architecture and investment push that will match the needs of the population we serve. We are well on the way, but more needs to be done. Miles Karingo, for Zanis in Nosaka. Government has developed a national eye health strategy to provide a framework to guide the implementation of quality eye health services in the country. Western Province Permanent Secretary Simomo Akapelua says the aim of the national eye health strategy is to reduce avoidable blindness in Zambia by providing equity access to cost-effective and quality eye health services. Government, in collaboration with One Sight Eslola Exotica Foundation, LEVCA identified Yuka Adventist Mission Hospital in Kalabo as one of the facilities that needed improved eye services. This is based on the needs assessment that was conducted which showed that the mission hospital needed comprehensive eye healthy support. In this regard, the hospital has now been provided with modern state-of-art eye equipment with support from one site as Lola Foundation. The launch of this eye clinic today 
is a testimony to our shared dedication as government in addressing quality eye care, not only in this community, but the province and the country at large. No longer will the people of this community have to endure long and costly journeys to access the vital eye care services that they require. As I receive the eye clinic on behalf of government and the people of Kalao in particular, it is important that I take this moment to express our profound gratitude to one side and the other collaborating partners for the substantial investment that has been made to make this day possible. Your commitment to the well-being of our communities is truly commendable. One site is the Luxotica Foundation Country Director Fales Mongole outlines her organization's mission, objective, and work focus. The foundation's mission is to help everyone around the world, including Zambia and Calabo, to see more and be more. We are all aware here that good vision has the power to unlock everyone's potential. The foundation is having a, an objective because to eliminate and correct poor vision. Yuka Hospital Administrator Richard Licando gives a brief history of the Mission Hospital and its current status. The hospital has stood to be a beacon of quality health care and spiritual support for 70 years now. It is a 120 bed capacity facility fully registered by the Health Professions Council of Zambia. Ikacha Nasindala, Zanis, Kalabo District, Western Province. Muchinga province has embarked on a sensitization program for district human resource committee members ahead of the recruitment of 219 health workers allocated to the province this year. Muchinga province permanent secretary Henry Mukungule officially opened the sensitization program in Chinsali. Mr. Mukungule said the sensitization which will be followed by the swearing in of the human resource committee members is significant towards ensuring that health personnel are appointed on merit. He said the employment of health workers in the province should give preference to people who are locals to avoid issues of unnecessary transfers to other provinces. The permanent secretary mentioned that the province does not want to lose any of the 219 health workers allocated to be employed under the ongoing recruitment exercise. Mr. Mukungule also urged the Human Resource Committee members to uphold confidentiality as they carry out the exercise of recruiting health workers. He further thanked President Haka in the Hichilema for decentralizing the recruitment of health workers, adding that this will ensure local graduates get an opportunity to be employed, unlike in the past when recruitment was centrally done. Still in health, Peace Corps Zambia has sworn in 20 volunteers in the Community Health Empowerment Project and the Rural Education Project to be sent to all provinces. Health Minister Sylvia Masewo said the continued supply of community volunteers by the Peace Corps has helped in improving the health care service delivery in the country. Meanwhile, the United States Embassy charged the affair, Linisa Wahid, said Zambia has received more community volunteers worldwide. Here is Sharon Walia with the details. I promise to share my culture with an open heart and open mind. I promise to foster an understanding of the people of Zambia. These are the 20 volunteers who have been sworn in by Pisco Zambia and will be sent to all the 10 provinces. Minister of Health Sylvia Masevo was present at the swearing-in ceremony and commended the Pisco for their continued contribution to the betterment of the health sector. Our partnership with the Pisco is one that we deeply cherish and its significance is evident in the impactful initiatives they undertake to address health care disparity, disparities and strengthen health care systems and promote health education at the grassroots level. 
Over the years, Peace Corps volunteers have dedicated their time and expertise to our nation, working tirelessly in our communities, providing invaluable health care services. United States of America government says the Peace Corps has provided over 2,500 volunteers to Zambia alone since 1994. The trainees taking the oath today will join more than 2,500 Americans who have served as Peace Corps volunteers right here in Zambia over the past 30 years. And if you had any doubt about the Peace Corps commitment to Zambia, let me highlight one particularly interesting fact. Peace Corps Zambia has traditionally and continues to host the largest number of volunteers of all Peace Corps countries worldwide. I would like to extend my sincere gratitude to the Zambian government, the government representatives here today, for the tremendous support that you have given Peace Corps since the program began in Zambia in 1994. This ceremony is really about you and the work you're about to do side by side with Zambian people throughout the country. I am truly incredibly proud of the hard work and dedication and the positive spirit you've demonstrated throughout a lengthy and intensive pre-service training. Your openness to learning over the past many weeks is the same openness that I hope you continue to embrace throughout your service. Your days will by no means be easy. In fact, many of them may be difficult. And the Barotse Royal Establishment is elated to receive volunteers for the first time. The Barotse Royal Establishment and the people of Western Province are greatly delighted to receive the first education and health educators, health volunteers in the province. We are aware that Peace Corps has been in Zambia since 1994, but we never had the opportunity to receive two-year volunteers in the past. This gesture clearly indicates Peace Corps' desire to work with underprivileged communities that need support to reach their full potential. The education and the health sectors are key areas that require requires skilled manpower and expertise. While the government is doing its best to employ staff in these two sectors, we still have a huge deficit that needs to be addressed. PISCO are currently running projects which include Royal Agriculture Promotion, Rural Education Development, Community Health Empowerment, Linking Income, Food and Environment, and a one-year response program addressing HIV and AIDS and public health. Reporting for Zanis in Lusaka, Sharon Walia. Energy Minister Peter Kapala has inspected the construction works of the 1.5 million United States dollars Northern Region fuel pipeline at the Tanzania Zambia Mafuta Tazama Limited in Mpika District. Mr. Kapala says the, that government is happy that works are progressing well. The pipeline will connect the main Tazama pipeline to the Mpika fuel depot, which is the property of the government of the Republic of Zambia. The Tanzania Zambia Mafuta Tazama Limited is making significant strides in improving fuel distribution in northern Zambia with the construction of the region's fuel pipeline. Works on the pipeline, which will connect the main Tazama pipeline to the Mpika fuel depot, which is government owned, are progressing well. Energy Minister Engineer Peter Kapala has inspected works at the Tazama pipeline and is impressed with the progress made so far. I've seen the quality of, of, of work, especially in the world, because that is where we could experience a lot of problems in the future. And it looks like that has been taken care of. So we anticipate that um, that project will run along the new road that, that the Lusaka dollar it's an ongoing project and, uh, so that we can also reduce the, some of the cost of uh, diesel and petrol. Tazama Pipeline's Director of Operations and Engineering, Engineer Deodata Sezege, has assured government that the project will be completed by the end of this month. 
Uh, as we are talking, the progress of this project is at 90%. So basically, we are planning, we are, we are expecting that by the end of this month, the Honorable Minister, the, the project will have been concluded. And Chief Chikwanda of the Bimba people has welcomed the project. See, welcome, my dear. I'm behind you, the new Dawn government, so that you, your program in the you know. Peggy Gutinu for Zanisi Nimpika, Muchinga province. Now, in an effort to uplift the livelihood of vulnerable women and combat environmental degradation, Advocacy on Human Development Organization has launched the Power Project in Mufalira's Chanda Male area. The initiative aims to empower 150 vulnerable women with means to transition to affordable clean energy and helps to enhance their businesses through a revolving fund. The civil society organization Advocacy on Human Development has undertaken an ambitious project aimed at empowering 150 vulnerable women. In Mufulira's Chandamale area, these women were trained to transition to affordable clean energy solutions and have also received a revolving fund to boost their businesses. Under the Power Project, sponsored by the Non-Governmental Organizations Coordinating Council, NGOCC, these women have learned to produce charcoal briquettes without the use of machinery. So our, our expectation is that the revolving fund will be able to reach all the 115 women but we'd expect that maybe as, as, the, as, the, as the project is unfolding, where each one of these uh, 150 women should stand on their own, doing their own business. The project is designed to help them move away from the use of traditional charcoal, while also providing them with essential business management skills to increase profitability. We were taught how to make charcoal briquettes, and now we will not have to buy charcoal. Previously, I did not know how to run my business, but now I record all transactions for me to know if I'm making a profit. This initiative isn't just about empowering the women, but it's also addressing some of the negative consequences of deforestation, such as climate change caused by the use of charcoal and other environmentally harmful energy sources. Rachel Chisulo, reporting for Zanis in Mofolira. Over 50 entrepreneurs in Lusaka have undergone training in soft and hard skills by CNC360 Consultancy Limited. In collaboration with the Ministry of Small and Medium Enterprise Development, CNC 360 Sales and Marketing Director James Chuala says the training is meant to build capacity across the SME value chain in the country and market linkages to leading chain stores such as Choppies and ShopRite. In order to promote the development and growth of cooperatives, small and medium enterprises in Zambia, the government created the Ministry of Small and Medium Enterprise Development. Over the last two years, several interventions have been made by the ministry to develop SMEs and cooperatives through facilitation of mentorship and business services, training of SMEs and market linkages including access to finances. These interventions are aimed at contributing to decent job and wealth creation especially for the women and youths. 360 Consulting is a leading uh, consulting firm. It's a private consulting firm that is working very, very closely with government through the Ministry of Small and Medium Enterprises, Development and Cooperatives. Uh, we are poised to be the leading consulting firm when it comes to capacity building. Um, of training so far, we have uh, trained uh, 50. Uh, more than 50 actually SMEs. We had uh, the capacity building training uh, uh, which took place recently and the Ministry of Small Medium Enterprises was represented by the PS herself as well as the Chopis. Chopis also uh, uh, present. Keep Said Enterprises is one of the beneficiaries of the training and shares how this has helped his business to grow. So in um, a nutshell, there are trainings that um, I have attended and uh, these trainings probably tackled a number of issues, <clears throat> but um, we can talk about uh, business formalization, 
we can talk about uh, business growth, we can talk about uh, business resilience, we can talk about um, uh, business compliance, product marketing and branding, as well as uh, record keeping. So these are issues that um, have really been uh, so helpful. I think uh, you might have known that uh, small and medium entrepreneurs mostly do have challenges even when it comes to uh, formalization you'd find that uh, most of uh, entrepreneurs are actually operating more informally instead of uh, uh, in a formal way. Other entrepreneurs also narrate how beyond the training, they have been linked with key chain stores. So mostly has been the trainings and market linkages as well with uh, other SMEs. So that has really helped us to grow as a company because basing on our statistics from the time we began to the time we started interacting with the initial SMEs, a lot has happened and our numbers have increased and yeah, it's been a good experience so far. It mm, was awesome firstly. We had a lot of mind-changing uh, moments. We were trained about financial literacy, bookkeeping, about uh, ways in which we could enhance ourselves, our knowledge, and also prepare ourselves as companies, as small uh, entrepreneurs in ways that uh, we can make ourselves ready for funding, we can make ourselves ready for the market. The development of micro, small and medium enterprises is viewed as one of the sustainable ways of reducing the levels of poverty and improving the quality of life of households through wealth and job creation. Audrey Kalenga, Zanis News, Lusaka. Audrey Kalenga with that report and in other news, Acting Minister of Finance and National Planning, Charles Milupi, says there is need to create an expanded and secure market and adequate infrastructure for goods and services for easy trade and investment in the African continent. Speaking when he officially opened the 2023 Africa Think Tank Summit in Osaka, Mr. Milupi said the theme for this year's summit underscores Africa's need to bridge the gap between research policy formulation and implementation of the Africa Continental Free Trade Area Agreement. Here is a report. The Africa Think Tank Summit has officially been opened in Lusaka. Acting Minister of Finance Charles Milupi has officially opened the summit with a call on Africa to expand and secure its markets for goods and services of state parties through the development of adequate resources. And in, and in the rest of Africa, is conscious of the need to create an, ex an expanded and a secure market for the goods and services of state parties through the development of adequate infrastructure and the reduction or progressive elimination of tariffs and non intentional linking evidence uh, based the formulation of policies and the practices to contribute to the successful implementation of the AFC FTA, which I believe is the theme for the North Africa Think Tank Summit. The summit, which has attracted over 200 delegates, was also characterized by panel discussions from representatives from the African Union, Southern Africa Development Community, SADC, and Africa Business Incubators Network and Africa Capacity Building Foundation Executive Secretary Mama Dubiete says the summit will generate knowledge and insight for policy formulation, knowledge sharing, working together on finding solutions to critical issues faced by Africa. So one very important part of our mandate, the enable all of that, is to build a knowledge society. And to build a knowledge society, we ought to be able to generate knowledge and to disseminate knowledge and to enable all actors to be able to utilize that knowledge. And this is why, from its early days, the African Capacity Building Foundation has made it a priority to develop that research and knowledge generation capacity by building think tanks embedded within government, within ministries of economy and planning to generate the knowledge, the insight, and the 
strategies that could inform policy formulation. Meanwhile, Regional Network of Agriculture Policy Research Institute, Dr. Nalishevo Mevelo, has called on the government to channel more resources to research, stating that most research institutes are in a deplorable state. We need to understand and recognize that research is a public good. And I said this earlier on. It is as good as building a bridge so when we go out there to look for resources to build a bridge, research should also be part of that list of requests that are being made because it's a public good. When you ask for funding to build a road, uh, that is as good as research. So my message really is when our national governments are allocating resources for public goods, that research should not be forgotten. This year's ninth edition of the Africa Think Tank Summit is being held under the theme linking evidence policies and practice to support the implementation of the Africa Free Continental Trade Area Agreement and will run from 8th to 10th November 2023. Audrey Kalenga, Zanis News, Lusaka. Over 2,000 people have accessed services from the Electoral Commission of Zambia ECZ in Kasama District since January to September this year in the ongoing voter registration exercise. Kasama District Electoral Officer Moses Mueloa has told Zanis in an interview that the services accessed include new registration, transfers between polling stations, re replacements, defaced and damaged voters' cards. More in this report by Helen Walia. Registering as a voter is a civic right that enables citizens to participate in the country's governance system. This is why the Electoral Commission of Zambia embarked on the continuous voter registration exercise to capture as many people as possible on the voters' register. In Kasama District, over 2,000 people have accessed services from the center ranging from new registrations to transfers between polling stations and replacements. From January to, to September, we had the peak of 2,031 uh, people turning up either for new registrations or updates. Kasama District Electoral Officer also announced plans to undertake a mobile voter registration exercise starting next week. Very soon we'll be commencing the mobile registration exercise. We will be following them in the various communities. We are drawing up a program. We are starting next week. And the District Voter Education Committee, DVEC in Kasama, conducted a radio sensitization program on the voter registration exercise. <laughs> we surrender the property to the owner. Exilda Chilufia, a Kasama resident, highlights the importance of acquiring a voter's card. <laughs> Helen Walia for Zanis in Kasama, Northern Province. Still in the news, government has dispersed empowerment grants worth over 2 million kwacha to 69 youths and women clubs in Chisamba district in Central Province. Chisamba Member of Parliament Chushi Kasanda said the funds are part of the empowerment component of the 2023 Constituency Development Fund, CDF. Mufumbwe District Administrative Officer Agripa Chitambala has called for mindset change among cooperatives from being a means of from being a means for accessing farming inputs to a comprehensive business venture using their share capital as desired by government. Mr. Stambala said this when he 
addressed leaders from 65 agricultural cooperatives during a capacity building training facilitated by Cooperative College under the Ministry of Small and Medium Enterprise Development. By 2030, Zambia aspires to become a prosperous middle-income country, and one of the ways government is using to attend this long-term vision is promoting the development and growth of cooperatives, small and medium enterprises, all aimed at creating jobs and wealth across the country. In this regard, Cooperative College, under the Minister of Small and Medium Enterprise Development, has conducted an outreach capacity building training for cooperators of Mufumba District in Northwestern Province. The college is trying to support government policy where uh, they, they are emphasizing on empowering uh, the, the, the youths, the unemployed through a model of cooperatives so that there is employment creation and poverty reduction. We were looking at mindset change cooperative governance, record keeping, business planning, and entrepreneurship. Speaking during the training, Mufumba District Administrative Officer Agripach Tambala has told participants to start profit businesses, both at individual and group levels. Government is looking at cooperatives as business entities and not just conduits to access inputs, particularly fertilizer. Cooperatives are supposed to run as, as any other business. I hope the issue of shares has been explained to you. Shares, this was supposed to be your capital to start your businesses. For participants, the training has been an eye-opener. cooperatives <laughs> John Mohanga reporting for Zanis Mufumba District in Northwestern Province. And Chief Macha of Choma District has commended President Haka in the Hitlema for opening various windows of resources such as the Constituency Development Fund. Here are the details by Gift Banji. The preparations for National Toilet Day commemoration started for 17 November 2023 has reached an advanced stage. Chief Major Steve Dom has been selected to host 2023 National Toilet Day commemoration under the theme Accelerating Change. Chief Major spearheading the sanitation crusade in his chiefdom is keen to see his subject climb the sanitation ladder from latrines to waterborne toilets. President Haga in the Hijema has opened a number of windows and, 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 and the doors for anybody to go through. He is saying, I give you the money and you decide how to use your money through CDF. Now CDF is open. Anybody can apply from CDF money to have. Also, have to thank the people of Maja. They have been very, very cooperative. When you tell them something, they listen and it's done. It's not only that you see because I've been very firm to them, it's because they also have to understand why you need the toilets. Mind you, when somebody gets sick in the village, we do not know what is the cause of the sickness. I used to go to the hospital, just to be told it's cholera. Now, cholera is a cause of our own carelessness. I'm most welcome to Maja to participate and see what is going to happen in Maja. Leonard Mokosha is Community Red Total Sanitation National Coordinator. Our appeal is that uh, all the traditional leaders, if they can emulate his example, in the next uh, six years that is remaining, before 2030, I think Zambia can move from 54% sanitation coverage that we have to something much better, like 90%, because that's the national goal. But the chiefdom is way above the national coverage, which is still struggling at 54%. March, we are looking forward to that occasion to celebrate with His Royal Highness Chief Macha. He's such a great leader, and all of us are learners at his feet. For Joma Municipal Council, 
Prudent Utilization of Constituency Development Fund CDF is key in achieving community and institution sanitation. In this chief, chief dom, which are benefiting from the CDF, which has been expanded, we have uh, Macha School, we have uh, Macha uh, Hospital, as well as Kamwanu uh, Rural Health Center. So these are going to have um, uh, adequate water as well as uh, uh, improved uh, sanitation. So we are grateful to government for for this support that we, we have got. We have got. Also want to thank again the stakeholders for their valuable times. His Royal Highness Chief Bacha has been very, very supportive towards this program. Iftibanji Zanis in Choma, Southern Province. You are still watching Zanis News. Authorities in Londazi are happy with the manner the Zambian National Service, ZNS, is executing the construction of a 1.5 million kwacha bridge to link the district mm. to senior chief Moses area, which is highly populated and a leading agricultural production area. And senior chief Mwase of the Tumbuka people of Lundazi district has paid glowing tribute to President Haka in the Hitchlema for responding to his cry to build the Worcesterway Bridge across the Lundazi River. The people of senior chief Mwase in Lundazi district have for years been crying over the lack of a crossing point, which in most cases resulted in the chiefdom being cut away from the rest of the district during the rainy season. Expectant mothers were the most hit as they could not access maternal health services at Lundazi District Hospital as no vehicle could cross the flooded Lundazi River. This bridge gave us a lot of problems during rainy season. There was an uh, occasion where a pregnant woman was supposed to be taken to Lundazi, but because of water, they couldn't manage to pass. The local community had to carry the, the pregnant red on the shoulders to the other side where the ambulance was. But government has now funded the construction of the first ever 1.5 million kwacha bridge construction project, which is being implemented by the Zambia National Service. This is through the funding under the Constituents Development Fund. So these funds is um, CDF funded about uh, close to 1.5 million, 1.4 something they are heading to 1.5 million. So the amount are uh, being spent here and uh, the contractor in charge it is the Zambia National Service. They are the ones who are actually on the site and uh, we are very much excited with the type of works that uh, they are doing. Benefits will be huge actually because like I mentioned this bridge is a very important bridge. Right now as we are talking farmers are getting fertilizer. Um, it's happening now and this is the same bridge that the farmers are using uh, coming to Mwase. This is not all as government is reconstructing the washed away Mwase dam just less than 100 meters away. We're very much excited because the works have been completed and uh, what is remaining now is just to clean up uh, the, 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 the place itself here. So our people are safe and even as we are putting up uh, the bridge on the other side, we know that the bridge is safe because we no longer have um, those other problems that uh, our people were facing. And you know water was just flowing, uh, the dam was not holding water. Uh, you know we've got a lot of cattle around here, uh, the community are having different activities and once you have a dam which is not holding water then it's a problem. Senior Chief Mwasa is highly impressed with these two projects, which are so dearly to their developmental needs. Loba Simtafela, Zanis, Lundanzi District, Eastern Province. The Zambia Open Community Schools, ZOCS, has pledged to supplement government's effort in delivering education programs in the country. ZOCS Executive Director Cleopatra Muma says her organization is ready to work with the government through provision of school infrastructure and other resources to support quality learning. Alex Mkuka has more in the following report.
The Zambia Open Community Schools has continued to supplement the government's efforts in the provision of quality education. Zambia Open Community Schools Executive Director Cleopatra Muma has reiterated her organization's partnership with the government. I know government has provided a free education, but you know what, we cannot fold our arms and just not do anything about it. We are also trying to reach out to see how, you know, through the Constituents Development Fund, we can have more classroom, uh, uh, classrooms being built at the school. You have heard from the school report how the enrollment has increased from last year to this year. Almost 200 children have come back to school. And Zambia Open Community Schools Vice Board Chairperson Gladys Zulu now looks at the impact of her organization. We saw the impact that the cohort one uh, set of schools has had there. We, we started with early childhood heart project and the, the learners have really enjoyed having this center. At Shipungu, we were actually encouraged to put up another block because this is what the community is there asked for. They asked for an extension of their classroom facilities and we are now putting up a one by three classroom block. Shipungu Primary School was established in 2012 and has been operating using makeshift structures. <laughs> Epona ambire schoolu, ilo tuwa ambire tefo yari. Mbapadi lelo, tuwa kwata kweshu kweli ya kumono kutila na tukwata kwa one by three classroom, wapo waba na vesu baresa ambira. Chochika nkala sana, na kawi likutasha sana, pako hivimba mkwe sufuwewa fiashi, edio mkubika pukona wa zoksi. Ufu mepo tuwa ambire schoolu dino, tuwa ambire hawa fiashi, hewa tendeke schoolu dino. Mutampa kwa hawa fiashi, wale foresha machicha ze kupitila mba fiashi. Namatama Liwanga reporting for Zanisi in Kapirimposhi district, central province. And in our sports news, Ministry of Sport, Ministry of Youth, Sport and Arts Permanent Secretary, in charge of youth and sport, Chile Shekangwa is happy with the progress made so far on the maintenance works at the Levi Mwanawasa Stadium in Dola. Kangwa said once the works are complete, the stadium will be able to host big games that will contribute to the economic development of the country. Levi Mwanawasa Stadium is set to host the first World Cup qualifiers match between Zambia and Congo Brazzaville slated for Friday, November 17, 2023, at 18 hours in Indola. This comes after meeting the conditions by Confederation of African Football that the stadium should have an improved turf, well-fitted technical and substitute benches, well-functioning toilets and dressing rooms. Permanent Secretary for Youth and Sports, Chile Shekangwa, inspected the stadium and is happy that the turf looks greener. I'm grateful that uh, uh, CAF has given us an opportunity to be able to still utilize uh, the, uh, the turf and the stadium. That's a big thing for us because we did not want to host any of our games in another country because that's the alternative. That if we don't have the infrastructure within our country, we, are, we have to look for alternatives in the neighboring countries. It becomes very costly on government, it becomes very costly on us, and it becomes very costly on the fans and an inconvenience as well. So uh, we have not gone that direction. But nonetheless, there are certain undertakings that have been going on. And uh, last time I was here, uh, a lot of painting, a lot of uh, locker rooms, a lot of fixing here and there. A lot of quiet things that are done as well that uh, the public may not know about in terms of plumbing, in terms of electricals, in terms of security, etc. etc. So right now I wanted to make sure that uh, we are maintaining the lawn very well. Copper Belt Province Permanent Secretary Augustine Kasongo is happy that the upcoming game will be good for business. Whenever there's a big match at uh, the stadium, uh, there are issues that come of that. Uh, the people in the hotel business benefit, those that have guest houses benefit, and a lot of activities take place. The copper bullets are looking forward 
to winning the match on Friday against Congo to stand a chance for a first-time appearance at the World Cup in 2026. Mary Chola, Fuzani Sports, in dollar. Here now is a reminder of the top stories. President Hakainde Hichilema's pledge to drill boreholes at Nipa and Evelyn Horn College fulfilled. Government happy with works on the 1.5 million United States dollars Tanzania Zambia Mafuta pipeline. 2023 Africa Think Tank Summit opens in Lusaka. And maintenance works on the Levi Mwanawasa Stadium impresses government. That's all we could accommodate on this edition of Zanis News. On behalf of the entire production team, my name is Emos Zulu. Bye-bye.